Happy Sabbath to you, my Facebook family and friends. Alright. I wanted to um, share some information with you. It has been a little while that I wanted to, but um, didn't get a chance to. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Right? A lot of things um, have been going on around the world. Especially in, um, in, in, in the United States of America. Right? And um, we are coming to a time. This earth's history. Where prophecy is being fulfilled at a rapid pace. And it's going to continue to be that Right? And I named this, this video The Defining Moment. The Defining Moment is a moment by which you and I will have to choose for ourselves. We'll have to make a stand for ourselves. Right? And we can't do that without God. Bible says that any man who thinks he can stand by himself, a paraphrase, thinks he, he stand it, take he as he fall. Alright? So I'm going to read some scriptures, but I'm going to share some articles with you. Some articles that is disturbing. It helped to form this video and to entitle this video. It's happening in our church, my SDA church, and it's happening across the board. Censorship is taking place, right? And it's and, and it's taking place in the church. It's taking place outside. And I'm going to share some stuff with you. And as I share, make, make your own assessment. You understand? Now is our defining moments. Right? Our defining moments. So let me go on. Let me read this article for you. It says copies of the great controversy distributed in tens of thousands to capital riots, rioters. First of all, that, 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 that heading, right? That heading is, is contradictory. That is, that is a wrong heading. That should never be. Now I look up the mission. And the purpose for AdventistDay.org. And they said this is an objective site. And they, they, they are, they purpose to, 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 to um, share things that are going on around the world. You understand? So if you make this heading, if you say copies of the Great Controversy distributed, T tens of thousands of the great controversy distributed to capital rioters. It tells me then that they are insinuating from the beginning that Christopher Hudson, the Forerunner Chronicles, as we know, probably played a part in this. He distributed and, and his 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 um, folks that joined him that day on the Capitol Hill distributed tens of thousands of great controversy to rioters. Now they claim this website, the this Adventist website claim that they are objective. Right? They claim this. But they don't have their facts straight. 
You understand? This seemed like controversy to me. This seemed like conspiracy to me. This seemed like, hey, you don't, you, you, your head not a wrap tight and you don't have your facts straight. Because if you did, you would see that Christopher Hudson and his group who decided, now they didn't just up and say, okay, we're just going to the Capitol Hill and we're going to give all great controversy to troublemakers. No. If you follow all the rallies of Trump supporters, you will see that there was no such thing. And anyone, you would see that anyone who caused trouble was people who were against and they came, it had, it had some, some, some girl, she run through a crowd and hit someone over the head. You understand? And, and caused fight. And then another time, fight broke off. Why? Because pe dissenters, people who um, are against, decided that they want to cause trouble. But all along it was peaceful protests. All along it was peaceful rallies. Now I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm not here to, 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 to um, even enable that. But I'm here to tell you that this heading is messed up. And these folks, my Adventist people, yes, they are my Adventist people. They don't have their facts straight. Christopher Hudson and a group of seven Adventists, and I will read the article soon, they decided that, okay, there's going to be a large rally on January the 6th, right? When all the senators and Congress meet, and representatives, they meet, right? They meet to, to, to um, either... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Certify the votes for the election that day. So, a lot of um, followers, Trump supporters, decided that, hey, we're going to have a peaceful rally and a peaceful protest. Now, I am not here, as I said, I'm not here to talk about politics. And yes, I do condemn. What happened on Capitol Hill? I do comment, I do condemn that. And I'm no part of that. Right? You think it should a Christian protest? Yes, you should. But in what way? That's not my topic today. You understand? So you'll never see me in those rallies. You'll never see me in those um with these groups rioting and looting and causing destruction to their own city. You will never see me do that. Never. Because I'm not a part of that. God's people today are called protesters. But we are to protest with our voice, with our pen. And some and, and, and we may very well have to take some action, right, at some points. And that action means, it just simply means, for standing for truth, it's not about causing destruction and causing problems, right? So, so we have to take a stand. We will have to take a stand. But I do condemn, and I play no part in what happened at the capital, um, capital riot. But let me give you a backdrop. If you know about Martin Luther, the protestant Martin Luther, right? You will know that in his time, what did happen? He had followers because Martin Luther, when he started, to, he was a Roman Catholic and he, he, looked up to the church, he looked up to the priests, he looked up to the, to, the, to the popes and prelates and these people, right? 
This is what he was a part of. This is what he was brought up in. He was a faithful uh, follower, a faithful member of the Roman Catholic Church. Then, God worked it out where Martin Luther, a monk, you understand? A religious monk. He decided that, hey, he got a Bible. He saw a Bible chained to a church, you know, with chains on. And will go there and open the Bible and read right there. Spend hours. He didn't have a Bible for, for himself. He started to read. And he would just keep going back and going back and going back. But that, that um, Bible there, it was not the whole. It wasn't the whole, which is the Old and the New Testament. Right? So eventually he got that. Hi, um, Ray. How you doing? Hi, Miss um, Sean. Right? Right, so... He started to read. And as he started to read... Knowledge is power, right? So, inspiration started to come. And he started to question all the things that he would have learned from small. Up to now. And he saw that all the things... That he have learned is not consistent with God's word. Is not the truth. So guess what? When 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 you find out truth, when you find out something, guess what? Something clicks in you. You don't necessarily decide that okay, I'm gonna cause destruction now because I know the truth. No, that is the wrong spirit. But but he decided to do something. A protestant is someone who protests against errors that are taking place in God's church and they stand up for truth and they and they defend God's word no matter what even if death comes they defend God's word right but later on Martin Luther had followers called them the Lutherans right so each each movement each leader have a, have following Right? Even even Dr. Martin Luther King. He started he was a civil rights activist and he started to march. And he started to stand up for for the for the inequality and the unfairness that was happening in, in, in America against black people. So obviously he had a following. So each leader, each group will have a following. But guess what started to happen? Martin Luther decided. And by the way, Martin Luther King, name was Michael King Jr. Not Michael King, but it had senior and then um, junior. But his, their names was Michael King. Right? Senior Martin Luther King went to Germany, went to Europe, and found out about Martin Luther, that great protestant. And he was so inspired that he changed his name to Martin Luther King. This is just small history I'm giving. Right? But nonetheless, Martin Luther decided to take a break. He took a break. And while he on break, his followers, just like anarchists now, just like Antifa, what you know what they're doing? They're causing destruction. Um, the other night, Seattle, Portland. Burning on places again. Same thing. Right? They're burning on places. So same thing Martin Luther followers did. This, some of them, they started to burn on places. They started to say, alright, we take him back this place. When Martin Luther found out that this is what his followers was doing, the main person, the main driver of, of those foolishness, he met he looked him in his face and he told him, Hey, this is not my work. You are not doing my work. This is not God's work. And I will not play a part in this. And you need to stop it. And that's what he, he told them. So my point is this. There would be people who are following. And who will be genuine they will have peaceful protesting they will 
stand up for truth, but do it in the right way. And then there are those who will, those extremists that will go to the extent of causing destruction, and that's what we we see around um, America right now. You understand? But I still, I still not gonna side, even though you may not like what's going on. I'm still not gonna side with you, and I'm gonna tell you it's wrong, and I'm not gonna be a part of that. So if you get locked up and you get thrown in in, in prison, guess what? You deserve it. Because this is not how we get change. This is not how uh, we should go about doing things to get change. No. It have a right and a wrong way to do things. Right? So, so Christopher Hudson, Four Honor Chronicles. This Adventist Today.org decided to name the article Copies of the Great Controversy. Distributed in tens of thousands the capital rioters. That is what that is what they name. Now, if this is what he did, I would say, brother, you should not have been there. But this is not what he did. He touched down in DC 4 a.m. Him and his followers. And they decided to organize themselves. And to position themselves in different um, areas or location, locations in D.C. And give out the Great Controversy. Right? Those who don't know what the Great Controversy is about. Basically, it's, 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 um, it's, it unfolds prophecy. It unfolds um, biblical events. Um, it gives you history. From the first century. All the way to, to now and right so it, it gives you a, a, a complete you know a great um, study of everything that took place it will open your eyes and it will <laughs> it will show you the errors of a lot of things that took place throughout history it will expose error by giving truth so this is the book that Christopher Hudson and his followers have distributed. Went 4 a.m. and they started to distribute. Right? He had videos showing that. It was thousands of people peacefully protesting. And you know where he would have been? He would have been right the place where Trump would have had his stage. And the peaceful um, protesters and, and people who came to the rally attended attended that hearing. But you know what you know what is is, is, is recorded at the same time while that rally with Trump and they were guess what happened? These people stormed the Capitol, or rather, they started to, to um, attack the Capitol, breaking down barricades. And attacking the police. Simultaneously that was happening. So where was Christopher Hudson? He wasn't there. He was where the rally was initially. Where people were, were congregated peacefully. And he was given out. They were given out the Great Controversy. So for you to name this article. Copies of the Great Controversy distributed in tens of thousands. The capital rioters. You are insinuating right there that he's a part of this. So let me go on to read some of the article. January 11th, right? This is this is when they made this article. So they said an Adventist group called Christopher um, the Forerunner Chronicles. First of all, he's not a group. He's one guy. Right? And other some of the Adventists group um, members who want to play a part in furthering God's work. So he's not a group. It's one guy. Organize a massive Washington DC based effort to hand out copies of Ellen White's, that's the author of Great Controversy, Ellen White, the Great Controversy to the crowd at the Stop the Steel rally on Wednesday, January 6th. The group that went on to storm the United States Capitol building. So he's saying the same group, all these people, 
that were there peacefully, who was given these book, given these books, they were the ones who stormed the capital. Right? The Foreign Chronicles is an independent ministry headed by Christopher Hudson, known for fiery sermons uploaded to YouTube and for the numerous conspiracy theories about celebrities and the pol political world. First of all, the first line it says, the Forerunner Chronicles is an independent ministry. I, re I will read something about that soon. But he's not an independent ministry. He's a self-supporting ministry. He has a self-supporting ministry. He is a part of God's church and working with the church. Right? Some of y'all who tune in might not fully understand. But there's something called regular and irregular lines. Right? Regular lines just mean that the, the, the organization, the leadership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, right? Um, and, you know, God has commissioned, God has commissioned the whole church to, to carry forth the gospel. Right? To preach the gospel, to finish the work, and to, to bring in the second coming of Jesus. Then irregular lines is just the normal members in the pew who goes to church and decide that hey I want to further God's work too. Right? I'm I'm not gonna always wait on an organized effort to go and to preach the gospel and to you know do something. I don't need your permission. I don't need the permission of the leadership. In order to do God's work. Why? Because um, we have to make disciples. First of all, we ourselves are disciples of Christ. And we have to make disciples of Christ. We don't have to wait on the organized body. However, the organized body may have initiatives and they may have um, times when we work as a body, as a team, and we go out and we do work together. But that doesn't change the fact that everyone have their part to play. So, so, so for instance, if it is God tell, tell you to preach the gospel and to share his word and to minister unto others every day, but let's say the organized body decide that they want to do it once a month, what are you going to do? Are you going to wait on the organized body? Yes, you can. And yes, I think you should play a part. But we are not to wait on that. What other work are we doing besides that? Right? What other work? What other work are we doing besides that? Right? So we have a work to do. Right? And the gospel doesn't just mean preaching. preaching. It doesn't just mean preaching. It means feeding the hungry. Clothing the naked. Making your press go free. Right? All the oppression and stuff that is going on around us. Right? People even, um, I would say, taking advantage of widows. The Bible mentioned. So you stand in the gap and you stand up for right. All of that is the gospel. You understand? Sometimes we miss that. Sometimes we, 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 we just want to preach. And we're not doing nothing. Right? If you're driving on the road and someone needs a drop. In America, it's different. In America, it's different from Trinidad. You see a bedroom need help or a drop in Trinidad, they take it. America, they are independent people. And especially if they don't, don't know you, trust me, they don't want nothing from you. Right? I've learned that. But at the end of the day, we have to show initiative. And I'm a, I'm a pretty... Um, Determined and persevering guy. You understand? So you could be all proud to me. <laughs> if I see you need help, I'm going to offer you the help. I'm not just going to run out, oh, no, I don't want any help, and I go, no. I'm purposely looking to help someone. Right? That's just me. It may not be you, and, I, and I'm not telling you to do that. Right? So the, so the gospel is broad. It's not narrow. And it's not designated to one thing. 
there's a million ways God could use his people. Right? So they go on to say, I read that by say for honor chronicle says it is dedicated to declaring he is dedicated to declaring the threefold message of Revelation 14. Right? 6 to 12. This message entails three heavenly proclamation. Proclamation symbolized as being declared by angelic um, agencies to the inhabitants of our world, right? Is that true? It is. Hudson has declared rapper Jay-Z a devil worshipping Freemason and compared Obama to Hitler. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about that. Right? Let me leave that there. He have a YouTube channel and he was in the music industry. And if God called the guy out of the music industry and to share things, well, so be it. I, I'm not going to talk about it. It says self-described pastor. Self-described pastor. So in other words, they are saying that he claimed to be a pastor, which is false. Of the Forerunner Chronicles, Hudson is not an ordained Adventist pastor. Right? Okay. More, more on that. In the YouTube video Hudson recorded on January 6th, he explains we are sharing the great controversy left and right with the multitudes. There is no greater evangel evangelistic tool that could be utilized at this event other than the great controversy, right? Which is all truth. This is a last day book and it's supposed to be shared and distributed like the leaves of autumn. Um, so it says he says on one of his videos that people in the crowd were fascinated when his team told them that the great controversy predicted that America would repudiate the principles of the constitution. Right? The book does talk about that. Right? Um, in order in order for this country to pass laws and there is coming a national Sunday law. You may have heard it countless times. But in order for these things to happen, America would have, have had to repudiate the Constitution. Because if the First Amendment says freedom of religion, freedom of press, freedom to choose according to the dictator of your conscience, freedom to worship, in order for this law, in order for them to repudiate, it means therefore that that needs to be set aside. Right? So this is true. Right? Um, so he had a GoFundMe fundraiser appear to have raised almost 15000 for the book distribution. That's what he does. He usually have these GoFundMe fundraiser events where um, people contribute. And all this money goes to purchasing these books. And then they meet in you know wide gatherings or broad gatherings huge gatherings and they distribute these books right so this is what he does um the cover depicts the united states capitol building alongside the title on the fundraiser page hudson stated president donald trump has announced that on january 6 2021 there would be a massive protest in washington dc it is certain that the crowd will number in the tens of thousands and it was it did prayerfully partner with us today as we organize an effort to distribute full versions of the book, The Great Country of the to the multitudes that are expected to be in attendance at this event, right? Hudson has been described as the mentor of Angus Turner Jones, Angus T. Jones, you all would know him from Two and a Half Men, right? He played a part, and um, there's a video, he played a part um, in talking to him um, and telling and sharing the truth with him. When Angus T. Jones saw that truth for himself, he decided to come off of two and a half. Right? So no longer that's why he started to see he, he may have been coming in and out of certain episodes after this period of time. Right? He gave this heart to God. Right? And he joined the Adventist Church. Okay, so right, so they are quoting from that. Right, or American former actor best known for playing Jake Harper in the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. Jones converted to Adventist faith in 2012, 
and eventually stopped appearing in the sitcom, right? He was coming off and on. Soon after, Jones announced his conversion to Adventist, um, or Adventism, the North American division distanced itself from Hudson, stressing he was not a pastor and that Foreigner Chronicles was an independent ministry. Now, now th this is heavy stuff, you know. <laughs> and I'm going to share what happened in the Bible. So this is nothing new, right? So it says, nevertheless, it is clear that Hudson has a strong following in the Adventist community. So, so they are basically labeling him as an independent ministry. They have a strong following. No, the guy is a part of the church. He's a part of the Seventh-day Adventist church. He goes to Seventh-day Adventist church in New York City. Not New York City, well, some part of New York, right? He's not a pastor. And it doesn't mean that if it is we're doing God's work or we're preaching, it means that we are pastor. You see, the problem here is COVID hit. Now, a lot of churches closed down. A lot of our advantage, my church that I go, the church that I go, they still in open. They, they open back up, but more to the older folks and they only have a few people, right? So I haven't been there from since... April or May of last year, right? So now people are congregated and they, they are joining on Zoom and online and stuff like that. So because we're doing, um, if we're doing this, it means that we are not part of the church. No, the whole world is going through this crisis now, right? You understand? So, so it just shows that the, the foundation or the organized or the the whole thing about church building, the church building, that is not the church. The people make up the church. Right? And with all the people, there is no church. You understand? The building is nothing. The building is just a house that we all meet and fellowship and worship God together. It has no it has no meaning. It has no no nothing. We could meet and congregate on, 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 on a savannah the, or the side of the street or whatever and we'll be worshipping God you understand so, so, so let's not be focused on a building let's focus on God's people as a body when we meet together we worship Him in spirit and in truth so it says um Nevertheless, it is clear that Hudson has a strong following in the Adventist community. The widely recognized Adventist television ministry, um, Tribian, has rigorously defended his ministry. The distribution and reggae controversy made it into a report on the storming of the Capitol by the nation, as well as the Washington Post. The nation described the ground outside the Capitol at 4 p.m. on January 6 as muddy and covered in uh, detritus, used water bottles, abandoned gloves, a, a can of beer spray, and a treading book with the Capitol Dome in its cover, right? Enigmatically titled The Great Controversy, right? And that's the end of, of, of that article, right? How are you going, my brother? Brother, brother Charles. All right, so let, let's, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. So they claim, right, let's remember what they say. They claim that Christopher Hudson is an independent ministry. Right? He has a large following. He claimed to be a self-described pastor, but he's not ordained by the seven Adventist church. This is what this Adventist article is saying, right? Okay, so let's let's look at the Bible and see what happened. Right? Let me scroll along. We're looking at John chapter 1. It says this. Um, I read from verse 14. It says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, as we behold his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Right? Then it went on to say, verse 15, John bear witness, John the Baptist, he bear witness of him, and cried, saying, this was he of whom I speak. He 
that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Right? So all God's messengers, all God's followers, they are not preaching to glorify themselves. And if they are, they are not God's followers. They are preaching to glorify Jesus. And they are preparing the way for Jesus, making his path straight. Isaiah talked about that. Verse 15 says, And of his fullness have we received. Right? It says, And grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time. Verse 18, The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem. So, we hit, we hit any points right now. says, and this is the record of John. So, we could say Forerunner. We could say Sergio. We could say Peter. We could say Paul. Right? These men, preaching God's word. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? All right? So they say for an as a self-described pastor, but he's not ordained, and stuff like that. Was John ordained? Did he went to the seminary schools of that time? Was he an ordained pastor? Yet, God said, there is no greater prophet than John. This is what the words of Jesus said. There is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Right? Anyway, thanks for continuing to join in. Right? I appreciate your support. Hope you and your family is doing fine. Through this time as well. Um, It says, and this is the record of John, right? So the Jews ask him, the leaders ask him, who art thou? Verse 20, and he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not Christ. Right? I am not Christ. Went on to say, and they asked him, what then? Adob Elias, meaning Elijah. Right? We know Elijah in the Old Testament. Elijah was translated to heaven. Right? There are, are, um, are three people. Who didn't die. Or rather, who's in heaven? Two didn't die. They were translated. And one did die, but resurrected. If you look at the Mount of Transfiguration, you will see Moses was there. After Moses died, Jesus went and resurrected him and took him to heaven. Elijah was there in the Mount of Confederation, Transfiguration. Right? So we saw they were both there. And then we have the record of uh, Enoch. Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Right? He never died. So we have those records of these people, right? So Elijah, you say Adam Elijah? Because they think that um they, they believe and they read in the scripture that Elijah will come. You understand? In the last day. Now I'm gonna just find that scripture for you so that get uh, the right context. Malachi. Right? Um, it says uh, Malachi 4, 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the Great and dreadful day of the Lord. So this talking, this is twofold. One, it talks about Christ's first coming and it also talks about the second coming, right? So obviously when they read this, because they had the scrolls, they had the books, the Old Testament, when they read this, they say, all right, Elijah is to come again, right? And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse, right? So they ask him, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Thou art that prophet. And he said, no. Then 
verse 22 says, Then said they unto him, Who art thou then? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What say thou of thyself? Remember this is for on a chronicle, he's a self-prescribed, described past. So what do you say about yourself, brother? Who are you? He says, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. He say Isaiah, he means Isaiah. Then it says, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. Right? Pharisees made up the leadership. Different sects. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees. All these people. High priests, all these people make up the leadership. So this is who they sent to, to inquire. And it says, And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptize thou then? If thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet. So, so the great commission that Christ gave, Go ye in all the world. Right? He said, Preach the gospel. And to baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So who is that commission for? Now he was talking to his disciples. Were they ordained ministers? By the leadership? No, they were not. It's Christ himself. The Bible mentioned that for, for the, the whole of the night, Christ stayed up praying. Praying to the Father to help him choose 12 disciples. And 12 disciples that you see, in fact, 11 of them <laughs> were Christ followers. Judas, if you read it properly, Christ didn't choose Judas. Judas, Judas chose himself. He started to follow and become part of the group. But Christ didn't turn him off because that's now how he is. But guess what? Christ had his spirit of discernment. And Judas come to him to be a part of the group. He discerned that Judas loved money. And the reason why he's following, he's following for his own gain. You know what Christ tell him? The first time he meet him, foxes have holes. <laughs> Birds have nests, but the son of man have no place to rest, to lay his head. So he disown and he reach to this guy one time say, hey, the purpose for this guy following me is for the loaves and fishes. All he want is benefit and blessing. But he didn't turn them away. Judas still continued to follow. He continued to be a part. Now, knowing that Christ disowned that in him, did he say, okay, we can't trust him and we're not going to give him any part. You know what Christ did? He made him the head of the treasury. He gave him the money bag. Why did he do that? He gave him that to test him, to prove him. Brother, everybody have a chance. Everybody have a chance with Christ. We could choose to take this time and to really get a personal and deep relationship with God and allow God to change us completely from within. Or can just follow Christ for the loaves and fishes. And this is what happened with Judas. Right? All the miracles, all the blessings, all the everything. Right? All the selflessness. The perfect character of God was in Christ. But he never once tell himself time to repent and give up. That's why in the end, what happened to him? Judas sold out Christ for 30 pieces of soup. And then he went and hanged himself. He committed suicide. Right? So eventually, this could happen to us. Eventually, if it is, we don't allow Christ in our lives and to change us. Right? There could come a time when we can grieve the Holy Spirit. And then God decide to walk with us no more. And that is just the truth. 
But God wishes that none perish, but all come to repentance, right? So he's a merciful and loving God, right? Um, and very long-suffering. Understand? I don't deserve his mercy. I don't deserve his grace. I don't deserve anything that God gives to me. But he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but all but come to repentance should not perish, but have everlasting life, right? And he said, while we were yet sinners, this is what the scripture is saying, while we were yet sinners, in due time, Christ died for us, right? He reconciled us back to the Father. So you know what I'd say? That tells me, hey sisters, thanks for joining. That tells me right there that God didn't look at the condition of humanity. He didn't look at the condition of humanity, you know, and say them wicked people. They sin. I ain't feeling to go down there. I ain't feeling to 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 um to save. Them. He said, while we were yet sinners, so in the process of us being polluted and dirty, he picked us up, dust us off, and clean us up, and give us a fresh start, right? So, as we go on, it says, he it is who is coming after me and preferred, is preferred before me. But before he says in verse 26, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. So John the Baptist did baptize. For honor, he, I saw videos with him baptizing. And God will have to use some of us to baptize. Because guess what? The commission is not to the leadership only. The organize, organization, the commission is for all God's disciples. Go ye in all the world. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So if it is you sharing God's word. Now for me, this is what I would do. If I met someone and I'm sharing the gospel with them. And trust me, it's going to take a while. It may take years. But at the end of the day, they, that person will have to make their own decision. I am not going to, to, to make that decision for them or push them to do that. But if they do decide to become, to give their heart to God and to, be, and to be baptized, I am going to my local church organization and I'm going to share, I'm going to relay the details with them and they to organize. But let's say I go to a remote um, land or a place that, you know, there is no proper leadership or anything, right? And, 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 and I can't get in touch with anyone. And that person wants to be baptized there. Guess what? <laughs> I'm going to find a sea. I'm going to find a river. I'm going to find a lake. And I know God, through His Spirit, will be able to use me, use you, to baptize that person, right? So, it's not confined. To any one people. So it says, um, He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. Right? So any messenger will uplift Christ. It's not about them. These things were done in uh, Batabara, can't pronounce that word, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I, am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And it hold upon him, right? The Holy Spirit descended on a 
Christ's shoulders, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood, and two of the disciples, right? So we will close of that portion right um so so to conclude this section i would just say that as we read and understand the article that was penned and understand what the bible is saying now we understand that we have a work to do we understand we have a work to do we are to work together with our brethren. But you and I have a single file work to do as well. We are to work with them, work alongside them. But you are not to be confined to everything that, hey, this is what you need to do. No man can tell you what you need to do or what you must do. Only God can do that, right? So now we, so the defining moment would be that if the church persecute you, if the church kick you aside and malign you and label you as some independent offshoot, not a part of us, what would you do? Would you stand? Right? Same thing happened to Christ. The Son of God came to sacrifice himself, to save sinners. Right? And what did the Jew, same Jewish leaders, what did they do? They said, no, nah, that work he's doing is not our work. Right? So they separate and distance themselves from him. So much so that it was so easy for them to kill him. They killed Jesus. But Jesus gave his life willingly. Right? He gave his life willingly. Right? So, so what are we going to do? Christ or mankind. Right? My second part I just wanted to touch on quickly is that we have see we are seeing there's a great deal of censorship happening. Right? And soon God's people who are faithful to the end, they will be censored. Right, we are seeing it. Um, we are seeing it with um, what happened to Donald Trump. We saw what happened there. Right, all the big tech giants, they censored him and they took down his profiles. No longer you have a profile with us. Now, I'm not here to talk about Donald Trump. Understand, but this is just a precursor. This is just a shadow of what will happen. Conservatives have been censored. Right? Parlor. Right? I've been hearing about this parlor um app. And this um, you know, it's it's like a I guess somewhat like a Facebook. Where people meet and share their, their points of views and make friends and whatever. I have not joined. But Google take them off. Right? Gotta say, hey, we, we, we want to provide um, you know, a community that is, you know, uh, objective stuff. People can share their view, we can respect one another and we could we could um, uphold the constitution of America. But Google strip them off. Apple and Google strip them off and say, Okay, now right now they are going through a lawsuit. Parla is with Apple 
on Google and Bing. Right? Why are they doing that? Why? Let me tell you why. I'm going to read this article here. Why Pope Francis meet may be meeting with so many tech CEOs. Right? On Monday, the Bishop of Rome met with one of the high priests of the Silicon Valley. During a trip to Italy, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, who is that? All right. Attended the wedding of a friend. All right. When far on, passed the Colosseum hosted a Q&A session, oh, and met with the Pope, all right? At that Vatican, on Monday, the Facebook founder and CEO, along with his wife, Priscilla Chan, presented Pope Francis with the medal of his company's solar-powered drone designed to beam internet connectivity to less developed parts of the world. They also talked about the philanthropic initiative Zuckerberg runs with Chan, right, his wife, and he went on to say, we told him how much we admire his message of mercy and tenderness, and how he's found new ways to communicate with, with people of every faith around the world. He wrote a post on Facebook, Zuckerberg, who famously wears great to you, uh, I don't want to read all of that, right, then the meeting marked at least the fourth um, technology CEO who has had an audience with his holiness, right? Holiness. Uh, God said, don't call no man father and don't, don't uh, worship any man, right? So call him holiness since just the beginning of 2016. Within a 10 day span in January, Pope Francis met with both Apple CEO Tim Cook, the same one who's censoring people, Facebook censoring people, right? And former CEO, um, Google CEO, and Alphabetic Executive Chairman Eric um, Schmidt. And in February, Francis met with Kevin um, Sistrom, Instagram's CEO. Right? Is all these platforms. And Twitter too. <laughs> they ban Trump and they ban conservative Trump. Right? Um, so it says, Pope Francis handed and curated book, uh, presented the Pope, right? Instagram CEO presented Pope uh, with a hand curated book of Instagram images according to an ABC News report of the time. In a post on a photo driven social media site, St. John said uh, he spoke about the power of images to unite people across different cultures and languages. But my question to you is why does these big tech giants? Why, why did they? Why did they? Alright? Ask yourself that. Why did they? Them as friends now? Alright. Um. Pope Francis said the digital world is a public square, a meeting place where we can either encourage or demean one another, right? That's true. Engage in a meaningful discussion on fair attacks. He said the internet can help us to be better citizens. Access to digital net networks entail a responsibility for our neighbor, whom we do not see, but who is nonetheless real and has a dignity which must be respected. It probably doesn't hurt that some of these CEOs are big philanthropists. Cook and Zuckerberg, for instance, have pledged to give away the wealth they have earned. Schumit has created a family foundation focused on the environment, an issue Pope Francis has also written about extensively. Right? So same initiative. They are all pushing. Schmidt is also the author of a book titled The New Digital Age, Reshaping the future of people, nations, and business, which he authorized with Jared Cohen, a former official at the State Department who head of Google Ideas and accompanied Schmidt on the paper visit. Francis, of course, has embraced technology in ways that 
sharply depart from his predecessors while he has labeled himself a tech dinosaur who does not use a computer. Now, Pope Francis have a Twitter account. Alright? So, you have brother. I mean, you're old or whatever. It doesn't matter. You had to get with the times, right? I agree with you. But why are they meeting with these guys? Why is he meeting with these guys? Now, previous years, this is what Pope Francis said. The Pope, Fran Pope Francis says, fundamentalism is a disease in all religions. Right? This is what he went on to say. In a press conference on Monday, a disease that exists in all religion, I had a pee boy. Hey, let me finish fast. A disease that exists in all religions, in the Catholic Church, we have some. Many who believe they possess the absolute truth and they go on sullying others through slander and defamation. And this is wrong. Now, these words, the interpretation of these words or the meaning of these words, I will agree with him. But in one, what context is he using it? Right? We have to consider that. Deformation and sullying is wrong. You understand? It's wrong. But if you and I have another discussion about God's word, if we stick to the truth, we stick to our doubts said the Lord, right? But we disagree. Would that be considered that? Right? And this is wrong. I say this because it is my church. Religious fundamentalism must be combated. It is not religious. God is lacking. It is idolatrous. That is what he's saying. Hey, good afternoon, brother. How are you? Good to see you. How is um, Zambia? He says, as quoted in Religion News Service, from part of the Pope's answer to the question, religious fundamentalism is threatened, is threatening the whole planet. We saw this with the Paris attack. Right? We saw what happened in Paris. Right? And I would agree with him with this. Right? It was it it, 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 it was um it was ISIS. Right? It was terrorists who who committed these acts in Paris. These attacks, terrorist attacks. Right? I think that was when that could have been two thousand and fifteen or two thousand and sixteen. Or 17. In the face of this danger, do you think religious leaders should intervene more in the political sphere? Uh, the Vatican inside. If, right? So, I'll end with that. Now, the question remains. Who or what is a fundamentalist? Right? So, what did he say? Fundamentalism or fundamentalist is a disease. What is the definition of a fundamentalist? All right, the meaning says, a person who believes in the strict literal interpretation of scripture in a religion. <laughs> that is plain as you can get it. So if, if I believe in a literal, the literal second coming of Christ, or if I believe in every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, which is the word of God, I am a fundamentalist. Right? It says, relating to or advocating the strict literal interpretation of scripture. Then um, another meaning says, what is an example of a fundamentalist? I'm going to close with this. Fundamentalism is defined as a strict adherence to some belief or ide ideology. Especially in a religious context or a form of Christianity. Where the Bible is taken literally and obeyed in full. When a person follows every possible rule of the Bible, both literal and implied, this is an example of a fundamentalist. Right? So, he said fundamentalism is a disease. Now, those extremists and those fanatics and stuff like that who purposely cause trouble and kill people, if you're calling them a fundamentalist, I would agree with you because I disagree with them. But to use the word fundamentalist or fundamentalism across the board is an error. So who would you be called in these last days? If you preach an unadulterated truth. To call people to repentance. You're going to be called that. 
You're already censoring people. It's not going to stop. And you and I would be next. If we stand on the side of, the side of God. Alright? I was going to share something else in the Bible. But I think I have exhausted my time. And I need to be. <laughs> so. Brethren, now is our defining.